What's going on YouTube? Q back here again with another video for you. In today's video, I'm about to go through my top five most fun cars that I have owned. Spoiler alert, I'm driving one of them right now. <laughs> so, what's my criteria for a fun car? So for me, my car's gotta be fun on the street and on the track, so that's how I'm ranking them. Fun on the street, fun on the track, just everyday commute, because my cars are basically daily drivers, commuter cars, but they are also fun as well, so that's how I'm gonna rank that, so keep that in mind. But before we jump into this list, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, browse the channel, let's jump into it. want to give a huge shout out to the men of culture so we got race car friends honey gang nate and blueprint one le so go check out their channels on the feature section of my channel so i'll actually be linking up with those guys in a couple videos so stay tuned for that so let me start off this list so this is going to be straight to the point short and sweet so my number five most fun to car drive car that i have on that's going to be drum roll my Integris, and I'm going to group them both together, the A-Spec Integra, 6B manual, and the Integra Type S. So what makes those fun? So the A-Spec Integra, I had a lot more fun with that car on a day-to-day -day basis. Slow car, fast type of deal. So I was able to like reach the limits driving that car on a day-to-day -day commute. And I can, like the limits weren't as high. The Integra Type S is a blast to drive on the track. So that might be the most fun to drive car I have on the track. But on the street, it's not as fun just because the limits are so high and I can't get it to do the things that it does on the track at the limits I can't do that on the street I'll be that's breaking the law like big time breaking the law so that's why the Integra is going to be number five I know that's going to be a shocker to a lot of you but that's just what it is fun to drive on the track and if you got the space to do so it's fine but if you've been following the channel, I like to bring my cars out and tap into all the performance. Like, I don't want to be at the limit to get all the performance. That's why it's going to be that low. So my number four car on the list, and it was kind of hard to place this one, but that one's going to be the Mustang GT350. And the Mustang GT wouldn't even make the list. The one that I had on the channel, all these cars but one are going to be on the channel, except for the honorable one of the honorable mentions. But the GT350, that car was a blast to drive and as i was just saying with the integra type s that car was between that and the type s that's the most fun car that i ever driven on the track and but <laughs> with that said it wasn't as fun to drive on the street because that car revved up to 8250 rpm and you got to ring it all the way out to tap into all the performance to get all the noises the machine gun backfires that the exhaust does but driving on the street like under 4,000 rpm is actually underwhelming and the gt the regular mustang gt felt faster and i think it actually was faster but it has a lot more torque the lack of torque makes it for a less of a daily driver with that kind of horsepower as i mid-shift my downshift so that's where i'm going to rank the mustang gt350 number four number three that is going to be and this is going to shock a lot of people that's going to be my Camaros, and I'm going to lump those two in together. I had the ZL1 2022, and I had a 2020 SS1 LE. So the SS1 LE is going to be a more fun car for me. That's just what it is. ZL1, same thing. It takes a lot. That car has, like, way too much potential to even be able to tap into to that kind of power. 650 horsepower. Even on the track, I couldn't even, like, it was somewhat boring on the track because I go to smaller, more technical tracks. You need space to tap into the ZL1's power and potential. The SS1 LE, however, is the perfect amount of horsepower for me. For that platform, great platform, the Alpha platform, the Alpha chassis is amazing. And I still, to this day, think that's the best platform that I've ever owned. And one of the best on the market that I've ever driven. So the SS1 LE, the power just goes down. You can roll through the gears. Shifter's great. The steering is amazing. Probably the best steering that I've felt in any of these modern cars that I had driven. The car is so communicative and it can do so much. Just so much fun, even on the street because it has torque. So that's why I put it above the GT350. The GT350 had torque. I'll put that above the SS1 LE. But I haven't driven my SS1 LE on the track, unfortunately. Only the ZL1. ZL1 was a sledgehammer on the track. Like, 
in my video people were saying i was driving slow but that car is so fast and it the tracks you need a lot of space you need a, a lot of room to get busy with that zl1 and these tracks that i go to just too small for that so the ss1 elite definitely shines there and i had a blast job in the ss1 elite on the streets as well i couldn't get it to do slipping and sliding let me backtrack to the mustang i couldn't get that thing to slide at all trying to do donuts even with everything turned off i couldn't get it to do it for some reason and my camaros it would sometimes do it but it was kind of it was a tricky situation because it had launch control as well so dumping the clutch it wants you to grip and go but i'm just trying to slide and have fun so it wouldn't do it all the time i just couldn't turn it all off and just do it i don't know why but yeah camaro number three my number two car is going to be what you see right here the gr corolla and this car is a blast to drive it's a all-weather solution all-wheel drive 300 horsepower and this is so delightful for me to drive man and this is why i love it right here so unlike the gt350 i can rev through the power band on the street like this is a very streetable car god i gotta blur you out but it's a very streetable car much fun on the street and i can just roll through all these gears go to red line this is what i love i love going i like a high revving engine but i like to be able to do it on a streetable basis because like the gt350 first second gear i'm at 80 miles per hour this car i'm at like 40 something so i can do it or actually 50 something but i can shift in the third and just like normal driving and get my whoo, get my thrills man <laughs> And then it's all-wheel drive. I'm here in Michigan. It snowed just uh, actually not too long ago. So I can actually try this in the snow. I know y'all. a lot of y'all checked out the videos if you're here for the GR Corolla. You checked out the videos where I got to drive it in the snow. It was a blast to drive. Got a handbrake. Gotta love that. You can have fun. You can turn all of the traction control off. The stability control. It'll let you slide. It's a little bit finicky, but you can still do it and you can get the rear and the swing out on here and that's what i love about it let me bang this turn right here <laughs> you can even do it on like i can do that on the public roads here like you can't do that with the rest of those cars man and that's a knock on the integra for not having one of these but handbrakes gotta have the handbrakes and this car is just built like a tank man so solid it is cheap on the inside, but this is all about the thrills. And I'm shocked more people don't love these. Like, if you want a more fun car, especially for the price point, this has got to be in that conversation. Now, these are hard to get, and it might have to face some, some markups, but it is well worth it, man. Don't don't overpay. Don't, don't sell the farm on trying to get one of these. But if you get one of these at the right price, this car is a great one to drive. Since I'm in it, about to demonstrate it for just a minute. It's a little bit biased. All through the gears. I can just go through all these gears. Those other cars, I can't go through my gears like that, man. That's jail time. But you can do this on the street. There's a lot of different ways to have fun with this GR Corolla. And unfortunately on the track, that's one of the... It's fun on the track, but what it does at the limit is kind of a... Uh, weird even with everything turned off it starts to rotate but then it'll want to grip that's in its first nature it's more of a drifting if you use a handbrake you can get it to do more drifty things on the track but on the street it's it's got to be top hands down the most fun car that i've had on the street it just grips i just wish it were a little bit more playful with the rear end but there is a modification that i'm thinking about doing where you can change the uh the way that the differentials work it'll actually allow drift mode so i'm thinking about that and i'm still reading about it so yeah gr corolla number two let's get to some honorable mentions and this car it wasn't even on the channel because i had this a while ago actually i'm gonna name a couple of them pontiac g8 gt so automatic but it's off the list if it was a manual with the gxp that'll probably be my top one because i love a, a manual sedan and then we also got my E39 M5, that car was a sledgehammer, but it has the perfect amount of horsepower, so you can actually utilize a lot of that, but it was just heavy. And then I also got my, let me see what I'm gonna put next, and this is all in order, honorable mentions that is. I'll put my Infiniti G35 S, the S was for saucing, because that car did a lot of things right. 
it had a high rev line like 7000 so this was a 2007 infinity g35s manual transmission of course and that car was fun to drive like i wasn't into driving like this so it probably would be higher had i like taken it to the track or i had more skills like i do now but that car was just a great daily to drive on the street and i imagine it'll be the same on the track but it's kind of old right now my most of my cars are newish and then the last honorable mention that's going to be the 2016 Ford Fiesta ST that I had. That car, the same recipe as the Ace Back Integra, but the Integra is so much nicer. That's the Fiesta should have been on this list, but the Integra knocked it out because that car is more the same. Extremely light, highly tossable, very capable, just fun to drive and economical all at the same time while being fun on the track. Like it'll also rotate as this person does some Detroit things around here. And this ain't even Detroit right here. People in Detroit drive better than that. I don't know this person from. We gotta see what they look like. But let me get to the number one car, my most fun car to drive. And that's gonna be my 2021 BMW M2 competition. Yes, that car stands on, but why are they stopping? That car stands on business and that it hurt me to sell that car. I essentially sold that car to get this because it was a good opportunity. But I loved my M2 competition. I did not want to sell it. I had a, a bet with the MOC that that car would do numbers. And unfortunately for me, it didn't do numbers. I had huge plans for that. I planned on adding the power. I did the wrap, but my audience wasn't receptive to that car, unfortunately. So my YouTube is a business as well. My cars have to do two things. They have to get the views and I have to enjoy them as well. And that BMW, it did not have the views to match the enjoyment that I had with it. So unfortunately I let it go, but I took that car to the track and it was such a toy to drive. So that car was less serious at the track, but I like cars that aren't so serious. Like let's get playful. I don't want a car that's all about the numbers. I want the driving enjoyment. And that M2 was it, man. It was slide around burnouts i did oh my god <laughs> the tires was almost bald by the time i got finished with that car it was just so much fun the power delivery at that inline three cylinder 405 horsepower 406 pound feet of torque i might have flipped that around but that car just on the street just power all the way through and that's why i love that inline six that's probably the best engine on, on any car that i ever owned like as far as efficiency the power and it just did everything right man everything i miss my m2 and i'm i will like another one but everything's going up in price and then the the audience wasn't there for the car but just on the streets and the parking lots i just had so much fun on and off cameras hated to see that car go but i had to make a move because the views weren't there unfortunately and this my youtube is a business and that was a business choice that i man i had i had like tunes coming up for the whatever, whatever it's called that bearing so my engine doesn't grenade itself i was in talks with a short shifter but the the attention just wasn't there for it unfortunately but maybe the new m2 in the future i don't know man I ain't about to do that again that cost me a lot of money for no return at all but i enjoyed that car and fun fact the best car that i've driven overall was the m2cs after i drove that i kind of like i'm like oh man it's something better than this m2 I want that M2CS, but the prices are asinine on that. So no M2CS for me, not until they come down in price. But that car was even more powerful, more comfortable, which is, oh my God, perfection. I love that car, but I probably will not buy one for the channel. Not for y'all, but I'll buy one for myself personally. They do a lot right with that. Out of all my 27 cars, that's how I rank the most fun to drive cars. Now that's going to be a difference from my favorite cars. I do, my favorite cars, the list is all different. So I'll make that list at a later date if this video does all right. But my favorite cars are completely different from what my most fun to drive cars is. So some of these cars I wouldn't even buy again. Some cars I'm looking at actually right now as we speak. So I wanna, I'm looking into those cars, but I don't know, man. Y'all know how I do. Every year I try and get something new. I'm trying to hold on to what I got, but that bug is just there. But I'm gonna leave y'all with that. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you got questions, you know what to do. Drop a comment like that. I'm Q checking out. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, browse the channel. Now I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.